podcasting from beautiful Leesburg, Virginia. Welcome to the Music Educator Podcast, bringing you tips, tricks, and practical advice that you can use tomorrow. Here's your host and fellow music educator, Bill Stevens. Happy generic time of the day to you. It is beautiful here in Leesburg, Virginia, and you are listening to the Music Educator Podcast. My name is Bill Stevens, and I am your host today and pretty much every podcast. Today's script is actually a bit unscripted and pretty raw. And I was thinking, you know, we've done a lot of scripted blog podcasts lately. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about us. Yes, you, me, the listener, the the host. Let's uh, talk about and let's share what we have in common. Or let's talk about what we don't have in common. But the one thing we do know is if you're listening to this, you probably have a love of music and you probably have a love of working with students. So let's get started. Okay, well, again, welcome. And I do want to say that today's episode is episode six of season two, and it is talking about our origin stories. And just to kind of put things on the table, I am a music educator. I'm a band director. I have taught for about 16 years, give or take, and I I have done everything from intermediate school band through high school, most of those years being high school. However, I am currently at a middle school and very, very happy in Northern Virginia. So let me go ahead and start with why I love music. Uh, And it really has been a a 180 for me because when I was a kid, I really, really did not like music. In fact, being a little immature kid at times, I was a little spiteful of music. And that's kind of weird being that, you know, I love music and I teach kids. And and my little brother, who was about three and a half years younger than me, he got the opportunity to take piano lessons. And, you know, that was good and all. And I was active. I was in sports. And I participated in scouts and all kinds of other things. But music was not one of them. And we'd go to the recitals. And yeah, it was pretty impressive, you know, being my younger brother, and who's incredibly talented and also has a composition degree and uh, regularly gigs at uh, churches on uh, keyboards. And I eventually got the opportunity in third grade, I actually started um, with the elementary school orchestra. And At that point, I was living in Southern California with my family in a place called Lancaster, California. Uh, I know I'm probably pronouncing that wrong if I was from Pennsylvania, but uh, in California, we called it Lancaster. And it was in the middle of the Mojave Desert. And my, my dad worked at one of the Air Force bases as a structural aerospace engineer, a mechanical engineer, rather. And my dad worked as an engineer at one of the uh, Air Force bases. When I first started playing, it was in elementary school, third grade, and it was for once a week, probably for about 30 minutes. So you can only imagine, you know, the year go, gets about a month in, and then you're actually, you actually have an instrument in hand. Um, and every week for about 30 minutes, we would go to the cafeteria on the stage, and this gentleman would work with us. Well, unfortunately, like I said back then, not as mature, uh, maybe a little hyperactive, and really didn't have the patience to really do what was needed to really learn a whole lot about what I was doing. In fact, we got to the end of the year concert, and we were on one of those stages and those stages had those big cracks, and I accidentally dropped my bow in one of those cracks just before the concert. Mind you, I really didn't know how to play, even at that point. And it, I mean, it, it, I guess no one would have ever really known uh, that I didn't practice all that much, which is unfortunate. But hey, you know, when you're a kid, um, you want to be exposed to a lot of things. And in fact, when I was a kid, 
Um, this was back in the day when, you know, boom boxes were big. And I had my own boom box. And it had a play a cassette section and a record section. And what I would do is, you know, being a string player at that point in third grade, you know, you make a lot of not so pleasant noises. Uh, and what I would do is I would probably attempt to play something for about eh, five minutes and I would record it, which if it was that and I listened to it, that would be great. Hey, you know, learning opportunity, but no, uh, for me, I had 30 minutes of practicing every day that I had to do and at least on the weekdays. And what I would do is I would play those five minutes, then I would I would rewind the tape, and then I would play that, making it sound like I was still practicing. My parents probably didn't know the difference, and that's how a lot of the year went in terms of practice. So to say the least, I was not that good. And that's okay. That's okay. Uh, you know, I learned that maybe that was not the time for me uh, to play. In fact... I'll be honest, when I was a kid, I actually didn't even really like music all that much. I liked the fact that, you know, before, how skilled my brother sounded, but I didn't really like music. I didn't receive an aesthetic response yet. Uh, you know, just my mind was in different places. And in fact, I, because I, I really didn't like music, in fact, one of the reasons I didn't like music, which seems really silly, I would watch, uh, there's a show, a children's show called Sesame Street. And I would watch Sesame Street, and I would see people singing with these monsters, you know, these little puppet monsters. And, I mean, which is all in great. It helps kids learn. But I really thought that was so dumb. <laughs> I don't want to be one of those people that does that. You know, despite the fact that they were singing and I was learning an instrument, um, I just, I didn't want to be associated with singing monsters. Uh, so, you know, I had this like preconceived notion that if you did music, you're going to turn out like one of these people. And so, um, realism after, you know, your brain develops and realism sets in, obviously that mentality changed. Uh, but it wasn't really until high school where I got back into music. So time went by, went through middle school. Uh, definitely some awkward years, but not bad. Uh, I was more into sports back then, uh, and I did a thing called Peer Helpers, and that was, you know, a people person, you know, helping out others kind of situation. And I knew a few people that were in the music programs, but not a whole lot. And it wasn't really until we got into high school, um, not even the, the first semester. It was the second semester. I was... You know, I had been in like advanced classes, not necessarily like your your 4.0 student, but more of like your 3.5 student in middle school and high school. And I, second semester, I basically was like, okay, where are all my friends? Well, in uh, when we got to high school, all my friends basically split into different organizations: cheerleading, journalism, uh, gate, uh, or gifted and talented. Uh, football, all those different things. And so I needed somewhere to belong. I felt that need. And I just happened to be talking to a couple of my friends that were in the band, and they were talking how great it was, and maybe I should check it out. And I said, well, okay, let's try it out. Um, so th when I decided to do that, uh, one of my friends and I went to our uh, the band director, which ended up being a huge role model for me, uh, and I went up to, and his name was uh, Mr. John McQuilkin, uh, and a shout out to you, Mr. McQuilkin, and he is a recent retiree of the Antelope Valley School System out in Southern California, and anyways, uh, I went up to him and I said, hey, you know, my name is Bill Stevens, and, or actually it was Billy back then, and I went up to him and I said, hey, I'm interested in being a part of the band I really like the sound of the trumpet, and I was wondering if you could play. And obviously, you know, what band director is going to say, no, you can't be part of the band? Um, he said, great, we'll get you uh, started. Maybe we can get you on some lessons. In the back of my head, I'm thinking, I don't know what a trumpet is. I really don't. I mean, I know people were talking about it as a popular instrument, but I didn't really know what a trumpet was. And so one of my best friends, his brother, well, both him and his 
uh, brother were in the band and his brother was a senior and he had an ex-trumpet and he was willing to teach lessons. And so I took a couple of lessons from him and I was super excited. I did my best probably within the first two weeks. I learned the B-flat concert scale, which now looking back on it, I, I must have really pushed myself because I know plenty of people that, at least in the lower grades, that can't do that that fast. Uh, but, you know, I was in uh, middle school. I was basically catching up. And that's basically been my career up through the beginning of college. So, you know, I started on the trumpet. I even remember uh, doing a pep band gig, the very first rehearsal. Uh, and my first piece was Land of a Thousand Dances. And I was so excited because that second trumpet part, you know, a lot of open and one uh, fingering. And I was like, wow, I, I can really do this. And, yeah, okay, with time, you know, I, I found my way. Um, and, you know, I just tried I tried to not make excuses. And surprisingly, because it was something that I took ownership and it was something that I told myself, hey, I want to do this, I, I actually practiced, which is something that not, doesn't necessarily always happen, uh, especially, you know, third grade me trying to fake practicing. And so I would practice probably about 30 minutes to maybe an hour and a half uh, a day, and more so when I got older. But um, I would practice, and uh, sometimes I uh, developed some practice habits that weren't as good, or I didn't really know how to practice as well. And so I'd end up doing some of the same stuff over and over again. Uh, in fact, one of these... <laughs> One of these situations when I was in, you know, when I was in high school and my very first solo ensemble. So this must have been, uh, I guess, my junior year, which would have been my second year playing trumpet. Is that right? No, no, no. Sorry. It would have been my sophomore year because I started my second semester freshman year in high school. And I chose a piece. Uh, I don't even remember the name of the piece, but it wasn't a B flat concert trumpet or a B flat, a B flat, it wasn't a B flat trumpet. And I had my brother accompanying and, you know, he was a piano player and perfect. Great. The problem is I had to transpose it. I wasn't quite sure. I mean, my director kind of told me, you know, this is what you do. So I took, uh, I had that old school notation paper and I try to rewrite it. And I actually, I think from, for where I was coming from, I think I did a pretty good job. But when we were actually at uh, the solo ensemble, the judge said, uh, you know, I started playing, and he said, something's just not right. And he said, you know, obviously he had the original, but it wasn't the same key that I was playing, and I rewrote the music. And I don't really remember the outcome. I mean, I, I was a little embarrassed, but I worked on it so hard. Um but at the same time, you know, I had that experience of, hey, I tried. I didn't necessarily succeed, but I tried. And the judge understood. So it wasn't like he was out to get me. He really understood. Uh, he, he explained and he te uh, treated that like a teaching opportunity, which kind of left an impression on me. Um, and fortunate later that day, my best friend from high school uh, and I had a duet at the Solo Ensemble Festival. And we, we did. We got a superior uh, and we worked together. And, you know, those kind of friends just last your entire lifetime. In fact, I'm, I'm still friends with them. I'm 40 years old right now. Um, so, you know, as high school, I, I joined the marching band my second year. Uh, and our first show was... What was that? I think it was um, the James Bond show. And one year was Chicago, which I loved. I don't actually remember my senior year. However, my senior year, I ended up being drum major. So I, I worked my tail off. Uh, I, I showed, hey, I, I really wanted this. And I was probably, uh, probably more of a teacher-style drum major rather than a show. And our school had a lot of drum majors that could use a military baton uh, really, really well and did a lot of flashy stuff. And I wasn't that type. My my perspective was I wanted to be uh, a team-building uh, drum major. 
and I want to do what would make us better. And you know, we had we had a good year. Uh, it wasn't probably the the best year, but the end of that senior year, we we had a great concert, end of the year spring concert uh, trip to Orlando, and we I think we took first place superior everything, which was pretty nice because that that the history of that particular program, at least those couple of years I was there, it was it was an excellent group, but it wasn't a superior. And that was the first real time, fortunately, which is just before I left, that we, you know, we really kicked some uh, yeehaw, so to say. So uh, we had a great time, and I met a lot of friends that I mean, we had a lot of great experiences, we had a lot of competitions, and it really, uh, it really developed, you know, a true love really started to develop. I loved marching band. Um, I loved, I learned to love the concert group even more uh, later on. But that uh, got me to also push myself a little more. And I tried out with uh, for this group called the Turner of Roses Honor Band, which is one of two honor bands in the uh, New Year's Parade that's in Pasadena. And I had actually switched uh, instruments in my junior year because of the jazz band. We had a bunch of trumpet players. Uh, I was a good trumpet player at that point, but I wasn't. I wasn't the cream of the crop. And so, since we had a lack of trombone players, I was like, "Hey, I'm willing to you know help out the group." I started doing that, and it just felt right. Uh, sometimes you just can't put it into words, but how it uh, flowed through my body, just everything about it, it just seemed good. And I love the, the sound of the trombone too. Um, so I made it on trombone for the Tournament of Roses. Uh, worked really hard. Every weekend we'd go down and rehearse, uh, march around Dodger Stadium, you know, all kinds of things. And we did that five-mile parade on New Year's Day, and it was a blast. Oh, my God. It was so much fun. Stayed up way too late. <laughs> um, uh, and we'll just kind of leave it at that. Uh, so time progressed, and I was faced with going to school. Uh, to college, face of going to college. And, you know, a bunch of my friends were going to University of Southern California. That's where my director went, uh, USC, and uh, that's where my best friend went. And uh, my family is uh, from Louisiana, but because my dad's in aerospace, we would travel, you know, we traveled every so often in certain parts of our lives, and we were going back down south. And USC, I don't know if you know, is very expensive. I ended up actually not even um, applying there, and I applied to uh, LSU, Louisiana State University. And at first, I wasn't so keen on the idea because one, my parents both went there, and I was, I was like, I, I you know, I don't want to be in their footsteps in college. And I once I actually did end up there because I did end up being an LSU uh, student. Um, it wasn't that big of a deal. In fact, I did way more than my parents uh, when I was there. So I was uh, part of the LSU Tiger Band. Uh, it was a great experience. Actually did that for five years. So I was a music education major. I uh, did that for five years. And it, it was a blast. I'm not saying that uh, you know everything was easy, but the trips were great. The people were great. The crowd, oh, my God. Uh, it's incredible. <clears throat> Go Tigers. No disrespect to any other schools, but, um, you know, your heart usually lies where you go. So, uh, you know, loved college. However, when I went to college, I had only had, and I, you know, I got into the music studio on trombone. So you're thinking, by the time I I actually auditioned, coming from trumpets and then was auditioning on trombone, I'd only had about a year. And my audition, audition was good for where I was, but my embouchure was changing uh, because of the switch. And uh, I got accepted. <laughs> Let's let it, leave it at that. I did get, and because of my grades, I did get a uh, music ed scholarship. But my playing ability was nowhere close to the other people that had been playing since fifth grade. And obviously that's a, a hindrance when you're you know, in a competitive group. And my teacher was uh, Mr. Larry Campbell. He you, was the, I believe, the principal euphonium and trombonist in the Coast Guard at one point. And uh, he was he went to school at the Eastman School of Music. And if he's still around, hey, Mr. Campbell, I was part of his group. And he was old school. 
I mean, like, definitely old school. Uh, and you learn to take things as a grain of salt. Let's just put it that way. Uh, my first year, I worked my tail off. I mean, I'm talking eight, nine hours in the practice room, probably more than I should be. You know, leaving the practice room at 2 a.m. in the morning uh, is kind of tough. And in fact, there was about a month in, you know, I, I unfortunately, I actually started to tear up and almost, I don't want to say cried, but definitely became more emotional. And I said, I don't think I can do this. You know, I'm kicking, killing myself. And he said, well, you know, if he, he was trying to be supportive, but if you're not a music major, you're going to have to get out of, you know, some of those uh, classes that are sequential, like the piano and the, the theory, certain things like that. And uh, so I actually did get out of a couple of those, and that was a huge mistake because a week later I, I thought to myself, it's like, you know, yes, it's tough, but what do you really want to do? And I knew I loved music, and so I the next uh, lesson I came to a studio, and I said, you know, I was wrong. I'm really, I, I'm committed. I want to do this. So I stuck with it. Unfortunately, I couldn't get back into those classes that I dropped. So that actually offset my schedule for graduation. Um, it was just a big domino effect. So I finished my classes. Uh, I had my first jury. Um, and, you know, I did, I did what uh, maybe a lot of freshmen do. You know, they're not always sure about their majors at first, and some change majors, some do different things, some quit school, some drop out of school, uh, but I kept on going. In fact, I even did summer school in between, and, you know, it was, I got I got stronger and I got stronger, and I ended up probably around my junior year, uh, went from a tenor attachment trombone to a bass trombone, which I absolutely loved, and I just kept with it. And I, I learned to love music and music education. Uh, met some great people. You know, I mean, it, it's kind of like the social thing. Uh, the last year I was in the marching band, I was part of the Tiger Band, the Golden Band for Tiger Band. That's what they call it at LSU. And we won uh, an award called the Silver Trophy Award. Some of you might know this. And this is one of those top prestigious awards that I believe only one school is given a year at certain levels. So we did that. That was pretty neat. Um, and I remember being able to play on a different game with Lee Greenwood. Uh, just a great, a lot, a lot of uh, great opportunities. <laughs> oh, goodness, thoughts on that. Anyways, so let's keep it more with the musical side. So I got through school. I graduated with my undergrad. I then, I started searching for a job. Actually, I did that before uh, graduating. And I got a job just south of Shreveport. I got a job in the DeSoto Parish School System. And those of you that don't know where that is, uh, that's in the uh, northwest part of Louisiana. And, you know, about half of the student population was below poverty. I had kids that didn't really have true floors at home. And so it was a very poor community, uh, very rural. Not in Shreveport where I lived at that point, uh, but I didn't know a whole lot of people. But people, uh, the Southern hospitality was pretty amazing. I was the music program for the high school there and the middle school. Uh, I split my between two schools during the day. I was actually, when I started a teaching the band, and I guess you would consider it an instrumental techniques slash choir class, uh, and then some beginning uh, in middle school classes. And that was interesting. In fact, they, I talked to the principal, and the principal said the guy before me had two heart attacks before. And I was like, okay. I wasn't sure if that was a red flag at the moment. But you know what? At a whopping $37,000, especially in comparison to the rest of the state, that wasn't bad for a starting job. So I was excited, and I you know, went to every home and away game with our little, little tiny marching band. In fact, I think it was about 30 kids. In fact, marching band was the band. 
Um, it was really tiny. In fact, before I got there, I was told it was like 20. So we managed to recruit a couple. And I think the middle school was like 40. And then we got it up to like 88, something like that over the summer. But I mean, it was definitely a bottom of the totem pole kind of gig at first. And, you know, we made some connections. I, I made a lot of mistakes, a ton of mistakes. And I learned from them. Uh, and sometimes I wonder if I really would have stayed there, would I be the same person? Probably not, uh, at least not in terms of mentality. But it was, it was a definitely a, a, a great place, a uh, great place to grow. And, um, you know, I, I missed some other opportunities. And I think part of it was my ego. What I wanted to do is I wanted to go into a school and call it mine. You know, I wanted to say, hey, that's Bill Stevens' program. He really made it something special, which that was my goal. Every Actually, that's my goal every single year. Um, and uh, it just it didn't have the resources. We, we started a booster program, which it never had before. Uh, we tried to get new uniforms. That didn't quite work out. Uh, when I got there originally, there was a big pile of old quasi forms with mold on them so that was not so amazing um and it was in a room it was like a big cafeteria it was it even had two floors it was crazy it hurt my ears like crazy because we had a drum line we did and i don't know if you if you've been in a room much with uh drum lines with nothing to absorb the sound it is not anything i wish on anybody so to say the least, uh, that school was, uh, those two schools technically, I guess the high school and middle school, um, were a, a definitely a stepping stone for me. And then, well, during this whole time, my girlfriend at the time, um, when I was in college, is, you know, still in college, and I was a couple years older than she was, and I came back for grad school. Ho, 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 back. And I uh, enrolled in the music ed program. I got accepted into it again, uh, which was kind of nice in a sense because, you know, I knew some of the professors already. And it really, it was the moment where I learned to love learning. And I know it's kind of embarrassing to say, but okay, I learned before, but I learned to love learning. Uh, I am a lifelong learner, and I had this one particular uh, teacher well, there's a bunch of them, but there's one particular one, Mr. James, or not Mr., <laughs> well, he is a Mr., but uh, Dr. James Bio, and he's at Louisiana State University, and I remember taking his experimental research in music education class, and for me, I had never had a class like that, experiments, formulas, papers, citations, uh, maybe something that's pretty common for certain kinds of uh, postgraduate degrees, but I had never had my brain push to the brink. And that class did. I mean, that, that class definitely did it for me. I found myself in the library, <laughs> almost like my old practice schedule. I was in the library um, about eight hours a day uh, just researching. That was before you know we had what we have today in terms of re, uh, researching uh, resources on the, the internet. So I did that, and I was also playing, because I, I really enjoyed playing. However, this is the catch. When I was, oh, again, in teaching in uh, just south of Shreveport, I was in a big band um, that was playing in the casinos up there in Bossier City and uh, Shreveport, and I had gigged a lot. And well, I laid off over the summer, you know, and I developed a music malady. And if you don't know what a music malady is, it is a type of injury. And what would happen is on my, you know, playing bass trombone, I would be able to buzz, you know, make a normal sound, and I would get this be all when I, my mouthpiece and my instrument were together, and I could not control my articulations. And I would get kind of like this patha, almost like where my mouth was too tight, and then it would have, I would force it relax, I would have to force to make it relax. And it was super frustrating, and I had to uh, warm up for a while to even kind of counteract that. And it happened the most, the like if I could pinpoint one time, I was getting ready to audition for the uh, wind ensemble, which I had been a part of at one point when I was an undergrad. 
and uh, my first note was, you know, a high a G, high G, not high for tenor trombones, but for a bass trombone, you know, your first note popping out as a high G was, well, let's just say it was a red flag. Uh, I was really tight, and I had a lot of trouble with my articulation, and I even got checked out uh, by an oral surgeon. Maybe we thought we had gotten a, or I had gotten a, uh, a shot in my mouth, maybe at a dentist appointment where we got a nerve, got checked out um, with a couple of professors that were familiar with the Alexander technique, just all kinds of things. And that was, that was really tough. In fact, it was really depressing because think about it. You love music and you can't make music or you can't make it how you used to be able to. And that's, I mean, that's actually really depressing if you dwell on that. Um, so I did a couple of things while I was getting my master's to kind of counteract that a bit. I took a uh, strings and guitar class, uh, like an independent study, and I wasn't sure exactly where I was going uh, in terms of that. And I still played for the rest of that, uh, that year. But, I mean, like I said, it was super challenging. And ironically, at the end of that year, I, I got the best uh, Christmas series of Christmas gigs I had ever had. And I was super thankful. But, you know, I, I passed the gigs after that on, at least for a while, until I got well into uh, my 30s. So I, you know, life went on. Uh, I, I passed my board at, for my master's degree at LSU. And it was, oh my God, it was a lot of research. But... I definitely appreciated what I learned there. Uh, and at that point, I went and taught in Colorado Springs because I thought my girlfriend from LSU, who was graduating the next year with her master's, uh, wanted to go out there. I, you know, I had lived in Southern California, uh, and she didn't. She was, you know, a Virginia girl, and she didn't necessarily want to come out all the way to California, but she loves Colorado. And I was like, okay, I'll get a job out there and. Uh, we'll try this out. My second gig was in Colorado Springs, and it was a high school program. It was one of two high schools there, and we had uh, a pretty strong program. The director before me left uh, pretty last minute, and it was it had a very strong concert program, a bit of a weak marching band program, and... Uh, in general, the academics were extremely strong in this school, uh, almost to the point where it was almost overbearing. And I'm just going to fast forward this part, but uh, it was a bit, uh, I learned a lot because I had structure. I had a lot of structure. In fact, my music administrator was at the same school, who was one of the best choir directors in the state. Uh, she did part-time teaching, part-time uh, administration and I ended up leaving because that girlfriend of mine that I had ended up going home and getting comfortable and wanting to stay there. So then I was, and then I was basically forced to decide whether or not I would stay with that girl or leave. And so I ended up coming out, but we ended up breaking up. And actually, it was it was okay. It was okay that she wasn't ready to settle down. And despite the fact it was eight and a half years, uh, and so I moved on. Uh, and in fact, long story short, met another girl, uh, believe it or not, with the same name. I got married to her. I'm very, very happy. Uh, but I ended up in Northern Virginia at a position in which uh, was less than stellar. And it grew. It grew. I used what I learned from my earlier experiences, uh, the marching band was like, oh goodness, really small, like 25, uh, and the regular concert program was like 70, and we grew that from basically that point to, I think we got, before I left the high school, the marching band grew as a th into a 3A, which was 70-something. Uh, the concert program went from that... 60, 70 area up to about 125. I was there uh, at, at just at the high school, and some years I was actually doing high school and a little bit at the intermediate school, or the uh, and eventually ended up at the middle school uh, by choice. And that's a whole long story, but that very first year, that marching band uh, received, actually went to several competitions, was very active, 
Essentially, the core kids that stayed in that program, uh, we won a national championship at the Baltimore Ravens uh, Stadium uh, for, the, I think it was back then, USSBA uh, circuit. And it was an incredible experience. I'm very excited. We had staff. Uh, there was a transitionary period. And it was just a great experience. And the program grew. It grew. And we had some growing pains. Um, and it had some uh, down years and some up years. And you know, at one point, we managed to get a state uh, championship. Unfortunately, it was kind of handed to us because in our classification that year that we got the state championship, we were, were supposed to have a couple other groups against us. And because we were a, I think it was a double A. Yeah, it was a double A. And our competition uh, like decided not to come for some reason. I think they got really sick or something. And by default, I mean, we still we did still performed well, but by default, we actually won the state championship. It's great to have a banner, but at the same time, it'd be nice to know that you really, truly earned that. Um, I learned the school that, the high school that I was at, uh, I learned to love what I did with the all three of the music, actually four of the music programs. It was uh, band, orchestra, choir and guitar and then we also were really close with our theater and it was just a, a pleasure absolute pleasure to work with all of them and uh, I learned a lot I ended up teaching guitar never truly done that before until I moved went to that high school and I currently teach and I'm very happy I got great kids and I tell them it's like as soon as I'm not happy I'm gonna go ahead and move on and I've been happy so I've stayed in the same school system I did get married, like I mentioned before, and in fact, that's the primary reason why I moved to the middle school, and I ended up, just before I got married, I got shifted, and I was at the high school and the middle school full-time. It was like a full-time program for each, and I you know, I told them, <laughs> if, if this doesn't change within two years, I'm going to be looking somewhere else, and the superintendent and the administration associated with that were very gracious. They split the the positions again, and I applied and made it in as the full-time guy over at the middle school, and I was happy to do that. My wife is happy, and things just worked out, and I moved out to Leesburg, and I absolutely love it. The air is fresh. It's close enough to D.C. and my work, and it's fantastic, and just through the natural process of education and music and technology and trying to you know compete with the top programs in the in the country like Fairfax County and Loudoun County uh, out here uh, our small little one high school district uh, does what it can to stay pace with everything so I got a lot of opportunities in which I could utilize all kinds of technology and I got interested in podcasting website development um, Google all kinds of things like a year, a little over a year ago, I started this podcast, uh, started a few episodes, and had to take a little bit of a break. One, well, I was still learning how to do everything. Uh, two, the school year got busy, and I ended up having uh, a little more on my plate because I also have a private, well, not private, but I, I teach uh, a number of students at the music store near the, the school I work at. And so life got a little crazy and hectic, and... And so, you know, uh, learning always, always was happening. However, uh, product creation had to take a little bit of a side seat for a little while. So we're, we're back, we're engaged, it's summertime for us now. I just absolutely love working with people. And even though the growth is steady, little by little, um, people comment. People are fantastic when they share very similar interests and they they open up to you when they know that you're vulnerable uh and you know everybody wants to be you know super teacher but that's not the case you know i would love to be a, a teacher of the year and those little notches in your belt uh really help grow you as a professional and <laughs> i don't know if that's the right word but your your frame of mind changes and so, uh, you know, you really got to look back at what 
is the most important thing. And that's really that we're doing what we do for the kids. And by doing that, we get to share a passion of music and just like that connection, that human spirit connection um, with them. And there's nothing to say that music is not, there's nothing to say that math or English or science is more important than music. Our system says it is, but that's not the case. And that's what we're here to teach and share and advocate for. And we have to advocate for what we do. Otherwise, we're going to lose what we love. So with that said, I just want to say thank you for listening. Uh, it's awesome. Please share your comments and thoughts. Uh, we also have a blog uh, for themusiceducator.com. It's the number four, themusiceducator.com. And please share. I mean, I'd love to hear from you. We even have a voicemail. So uh, go ahead and do that. And have a great generic time of the day. And I'll see you on the next episode of the Music Educator Podcast. Thank you for listening to the Music Educator Podcast for the latest tips, tricks, and practical advice you can use tomorrow. You can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. Please visit the Music Educator blog at www.themusiceducator.com for additional posts and music education news. As always, join in the discussion and let your voice be heard by providing feedback at www.themusiceducator at gmail.com or leave a Google voicemail at 703-942-9883. We will see you on the next episode of the Music Educator Podcast. And remember, music can change the world.